Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley, continuing on um, uh, my book, just going over the chapter headings, give you an idea of what this is really about if you want to get into detail, uh, up to around page 75 of a 300 page book, uh, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. And if you can beat cancer, well you can beat any disease essentially, right? Please subscribe, smash that like button right now, and share this video so that the world knows there's a natural way to cure the body of cancer. The Complexus Universus Medicus, the medical industrial complex. You know, uh, President Eisenhower warned, warned us about the uh, military industrial complex and how that was going to control everything. Well, we've got the same thing going uh, and, and, and really to worry about today from the medical industrial complex. So um, I kind of compare the two and, and show you why this trillion dollar industry is so dangerous. Uh, death at the hands of our saviors. Um, the, you know, the medical industry kills anywhere from 200 to, to 500,000 people every single year, and that's uh, statistics that come out of JAMA, the Journal for American Medical Association. Uh, myths and medical propaganda. Um, you know, sort of the, the, the best example of that, of course, would be, you know, the idea that you go into the doctor's office and you get your family history. They look at your family history and they say, okay, um, you know, what runs in your family? You've got uh, cancer. Okay, you've got arthritis. Um, they don't run in our genes. They, uh, disease doesn't run in our genes. Uh, what, what runs, you know, disease runs in our dietary habits and same, same, we eat the same type, types of foods. But there's just so many myths and medical propaganda that we all just kind of go along along with it and we're kind of brainwashed to uh, the, the medical industry. Uh, next is um, diagnosis that cause cancer. Well, CT scans, um, you know, is, are very dangerous, uh, exposure to radiation at every level. Uh, so just testing for, um, you know, in, uh, for cancer can be dangerous because of what you're exposed to. Not to mention what, something called overdiagnosis. Uh, overdiagnosis is, you know, just what it sounds like. Uh, you know, they really don't give you the right diagnosis and they overdiagnose you for so many things. You're on so many medications at the same time. Uh, judging health by the wrong standards. Well, that, that is you judge it by your neighbors. And uh, you say, well, the guy down the street has diabetes, um, and he's 40 years old, and I'm, I'm 44, and I don't have it, so I must be doing pretty good. Or the guy up the street, I mean, he's only 30, he's got cancer, so look at me, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. So, uh, and it's also the idea that, you know, when you're 20, you're healthy, 30, you're, you know, you're not young anymore, 40, well, you're definitely going to, you know, kind of start slowing down a little bit by 50. Yeah, you need to go in for a prostate exam, and you're probably on a couple medications. By 60, you're on a few medications, and if you're not, you're highly unusual, there's something wrong with you. Uh, by 70, now we got a problem if you're not on any medications, because you should be on several by then, 80, even more. You know, by 90, you should have a whole... <laughs> Uh, uh, shelf full of um, medications you have to take every day. So we, we say these are the standards. These are the not. These are what we live by. Well, that's all up here. Okay, I'm still 60 years old and I've been on a medication in my life. Next is cancer source. Well, you know, it, it doesn't really matter where cancer comes from because my health protocol is going to work whether you know where it comes from or not. But once again, I mean, there's so many theories out there about where cancer is coming from. I have a, definitely um, an idea about that. And, um, you know, we're going to get into what the medical establishment really believes. Uh, you know, they think it's uh, cell mutation. So, okay, we'll find out about that. But, um, you know, they, there's a hundred different theories about this origin of cancer. Is it bacteria? Is it a virus? Is it cell mutation? You know, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, next is genesis of life versus the carcinogenesis of death. So uh, it's the idea that we can be healthy and, or we can look at it as, well, we got cancer and there's nothing we can do about it. So this is what, you know, really is at the heart of the whole book is, is the idea that, uh, where, you know, where, gen where, where, the, where cancer comes from, it comes from living on the wrong kind of a diet. Advanced cancer equals advanced toxicity. That's exactly where cancer comes from. You become toxic. Uh, you have a bunch of things in your body that don't belong there and then you end up with some mutations and eventually one of these mutations um, becomes so serious that it turns into cancer. So that's where I believe cancer comes from. Again, it doesn't matter in the men, but I guarantee you if you've got cancer, you're very, very toxic. You're full of things that do not belong in the body because otherwise the cancer wouldn't be able to thrive and survive. Next is the Warburg effect and the reverse Warburg effect. 
So uh, what that is about is Warburg, this guy around, I think it was 1920, 29, somewhere in there, he won the Nobel Prize for discovering sort of cancer eats the body, okay, eats the, eats the body up. Well, it doesn't do that at all. It's actually the exact opposite of that. It's the reverse of it. Uh, cancer instructs the body to liquefy itself and so it can feed the cancer. So quite insidious, but that's what it does. Um, so they, the medical establishment now for over a hundred years or close to it is had a hundred percent backwards. It shows you again, if you're looking here for the cure for cancer and it's over here, you're not going to find it. You're looking in the wrong place. And, uh, you know, that comes back to the next one, cancer's environment. Well, the environment for cancer is within. That's why, you know, in families, you just don't see, you know, why, why did Johnny get cancer, but Sally didn't? You know, you know what what happened, or why did mom get cancer and dad didn't? You know, or, or why did mom's sister get it and she didn't? Exactly, all this kind of stuff. You ask, well, it's the environment that we create within ourselves, and you know, you might see a child in a family who gets cancer and one that doesn't, but uh, in the end. Um, believe me, it all comes down to the environment within. Um, the source of uh, random DNA mistakes. Well, that would be uh, this, um, you know, cell mutations. This is what causes cancer. They really believe, I mean, this is standard medical and scientific beliefs now, about 60%, maybe more, I'd probably say a lot more, um, of cancer you find is from cell mutations. The question is, and that's true, it just mutated. What caused that? In toxic environment. So they say, well, it's just spelling mistakes, spelling mistakes. That's, you know, God made a mistake. So when God went to split that st cell, I mean, it, nature just didn't work right. Because what is nature? Nature is God. It was created by God. Unless you believe that there is no God or you believe that God just sort of made things and then now it's just spinning off into different things and, um, you know. Um, you know anything could happen including spelling mistakes so I guess why how you want to look at it but I don't think nature makes mistakes I think we put things into our body that cause these mistakes um, and then cancer has been on the rise since 1900 well yeah it's got it's become an epidemic it used to be one in four now it's or one in 200 and now it, it's it's one in four people in their life and more it's 40 percent of the people uh, the population will get cancer in their lifetime. 40%, that's where we are. So almost half of people get cancer. I wrote this book because everybody e either has cancer that comes to me or they know somebody who has cancer. Every single person that shows up. And that's true of everybody. I, I know several people with cancer. Um, uh, every MD's health advice. Well, health advice for an MD is diet and nutrition. That's fine. What diet? They never say. What, you know, diet and exercise. What kind of exercise? What, what, what kind of exercise? I mean, you're walking, you're running, you know, should we do this every day? We're never told, and so, uh, you know, it's always kind of a question. Next is the great deception of family history. I touched upon this earlier. Well, it appears that diseases run in families when, when they don't, once you inherit from your, your parents is your, your looks and your height and your, you know, you know. Uh, but diseases, no. You could have genetic defects, um, you know, this kind of thing, but you, that is possible to inherit that. But diseases such as cancer or that runs in your family, none of that's true. You don't inherit that from your family. Um, but don't tell that to the medical establishment. Uh, scoffing at the truth. Well, that's what med that's what doctors do the best. They they look at what I do and they scoff at it. They just dismiss it. They think this is just ridiculous. Uh, you know, it's actually irresponsible. I've heard the guy who wrote the the malady, the the emperor of maladies, uh, uh, Semakucha. He 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 says it kind of makes me angry to write, write uh, to read some of these books here. There's you know this is we should be looking in the lab. Of course, keep looking in that lab. The 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 cure for disease or for cancer is right around the corner. Don't forget that, folks. It's right around that corner. Uh, evidence of chronic disease in the wild. Well, there is none. I touched upon it earlier, but um, there's no evidence of chronic. Nobody's ever shot a deer or any other animal and brought it back and found it full of cancer, arthritis, fibromyalgia, or any other disease. Show me one. I mean, even if you could find the rare instance of cancer found in the, it, it, you know, you, you would have to say we're the only, um, only species that you know get any kind of chronic disease on earth now infectious disease is in the wild but chronic disease is not other than the animals we domesticate and put on a cooked food or rough uh, diet or puppy chow or some kind of processed food diet then they end up with all the diseases that we have your body is the temple of god that's right this is your this is the temple that god gave us and um you're sick because you ignored the temple you didn't put the right things into it you 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 polluted the temple and that's a big part of the book. When you pollute the temple, it's all about toxicity. And what, what 
you know, what removes toxicity from the body? Well, my health protocol, raw fruits and vegetables, and uh, ionized water and everything else that I promote. Uh, what, what causes it? Well, next one is biomagnification. Um, I'm sorry, cancer's foundation. That is the, the foundation of, of a toxic body. And then biomagnification of the environment and the body. Well, this is where, you know, the higher you eat on the food chain, the more concentrated the toxins become. So, um, you know, biomagnification means that you, the uh, animal world and the, and the insect world, I mean, it, it just, one pet toxin is passed to another animal uh, and, and to another animal and another animal and it concentrates. And it's one of the reasons, one of the reasons we want to stay away from animal protein, meat, fish, eggs, or dairy, if we want to be healthy. Um, the, the, to the, the next is the toxic world we have created for ourselves. Well, we've been industrializing for 300 years. You see the, the, um, the oceans are very polluted. Um, and what we've done to the planet, it's terrible. And um, you go fill up your car with gasoline, you're breathing in, uh, you know, trihalomethanes. You're breathing in benzene, uh, hydrocarbons. This, you know, you ride behind a bus or, uh, or, or, or any kind of diesel truck, you're breathing in that smoke. It's going right into your lungs. We created this incredibly toxic world for ourselves, and we need to get these toxins out of our body more. And it's more important now than any other time in history because our 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 environment has become so incredibly polluted. So it's very we've done this to ourselves for over many years. But um, you don't throw up your hands and say nothing's ever going to be, you know, the same. Well, um, or we're never going to cure ourselves. We're all going to die. No, we can definitely remove toxins from the body and, and live an incredible healthy life. Um, Cancer devolves our acidity and toxicity. If you're if you're if you're if you're sick of, with anything, in particular cancer, you know that your body is very acidic, and you know it's full of things that don't belong there, i.e., toxins. So that really divulges everything about it. Cellular toxicity, the you know the toxicity of the cell itself. You know, cellular health equals human health. If your cells are healthy, you will be healthy. If your cells are toxic, they're not healthy, and you will not be healthy. Simple as that. A uh, tumor is a healing me mechanism. This is the idea that, you know, what a tumor is, uh, something wrong with the tumor no matter what, because if you get a benign tumor, tumor it means it's got can it's cancerous. If it's, if, I mean, it doesn't have cancer. If it's, if it's a cancerous tumor, obviously, it does have cancer, and it's got a problem spreading. Well, the, the body's, first of all, there's something wrong with the the body making a tumor to begin with you know it's these accumulations of cells I mean something's gone wrong inside the body well so far it hasn't caused cancer but uh, there's something wrong there you get a tumor you know even even if it isn't cancerous you, your body's telling you something this is not a normal thing and so um, you know your what your body's walling that off and so it doesn't spread to the rest of the body that's what a tumor is um, and uh, <clears throat> naturopath versus medical doctor comparing philosophies just that um, you know, my my philosophy is look to nature and you will find all the answers to to disease um, doctors say look in the laboratory and they scoff at me and I'm gonna scoff right back at them because they really don't they don't know what they're doing when it comes to disease they're great in these medical emergencies they're great when they're you know when you've got a cut and when you you know you need some sort of a so, so, you know, attention in that regard, or a serious wound, or you got an accident on the highway. But when it comes to disease, chronic or infectious disease, they're worthless. So look at the philosophy. They look to really to man, and I, I look to nature. And who made nature? God. I'll wrap up uh, the third part of this right now, and then we'll go on from there and keep doing these. I just want to go through the book and just give you an introduction to it. Uh, if you don't feel like reading the book, you don't have to go all the way through it. You're going to see what I'm doing. At least I, I'm giving you this here so you can see what my philosophy is and how I'm coming at this. One more uh, will be on the medical establishment, and then we're going to jump into my health protocol. Dr. Bob, see you next time.